The Amazing Prophecies of Muhammad in the Bible 28 Proofs from the Bible of Muhammad's Prophethood Introduction Very individual is born into a religious environment that is not necessarily in accordance with his or her choice. Children are raised to follow the religion or ideology of their family, society, or culture. Even as newborn babies, they are assigned either the religion of their family or the ideology of the state. In some countries, the child's assigned religion is even recorded on the birth certificate. By the time individuals reach their teens, they have usually accepted the beliefs of their parents or their particular society. Since these beliefs have come to feel normal to them, they may give no thought to examining and possibly changing them. However, individuals often encounter, or are exposed to, various beliefs and ideologies throughout the course of their lives, leading many to question long-held beliefs, traditions, or philosophical ideas. They begin to question the validity of their own beliefs. Seekers of truth often reach a point of confusion, especially upon realizing that the believers of every religion, sect, ideology, and philosophy claim to profess the one and only truth. Amongst these beliefs is the one which Christians hold against Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, the Prophet of Islam, that he is not a true messenger of God, Allah, the Exalted. Simply and logically, this book sheds light on biblical proofs that Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is a true Prophet of Allah, whose prophethood was foretold by the Prophet who preceded him, Jesus, peace be upon him. Before we proceed, here is a reminder that when beginning the search for the true religion, one should keep in mind the following four things. Firstly, Allah has given us the ability and the intellect to discover the answer to this crucial question, which is also a life-changing decision, what is the true religion? Secondly, Allah, the most compassionate, has not left us to go astray without any guidance. Indeed, He sent us prophets with scriptures to show us the right path. Thirdly, we should always remember the underlying reason for this search, the everlasting life to come depends upon adopting the true religion in this life. This should be our ultimate motivation and a driving force to keep us searching until we are completely satisfied. The Bible, in its present form, confirms that seeking the truth is the main cause for salvation. In John 8:32, it has been stated, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Muslims believe that the existing versions of the Bible contain elements of the original true message, although it has been altered significantly over time. Fourthly, we can only determine the true path and make a rational and correct decision if we willingly put aside all the emotions and prejudices which often blind us to reality. With this short introduction, I leave you to peruse this book. Kind regards, Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, in the Bible. This chapter was compiled from Muhammad in the Bible by Dr. Jamal Badawi and what the Bible says about Muhammad by Ahmed D. Dot. Allah, the most kind and wise, did not leave the followers of Jesus, peace be upon him, to disagree forever. He sent Prophet Muhammad blessings and peace be upon him, to reveal the facts and resolve the perceived mysteries or points of great division. Those who believe in the Bible should know that it includes nearly 30 prophecies about the coming of Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, as a prophet for all people. And these ultimately prove the truth of the religion which he came with, namely, Islam. Hence, if the Bible, or another scripture, contains apparent prophecies about the coming of Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, then there is nothing unusual or objectionable in referring to such prophecies. Describing true believers amongst the followers of Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, the Quran has stated. Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, was illiterate, he could neither read nor write. No human had ever taught him a word. The wisdom behind his unlettered status is to repel false accusations that the Quran was written or authored by Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him himself. It should be noted that there were no Arabic language Bibles in existence in the 7th century CE, when Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, lived and preached. Indeed, Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, was educated through the Quran, which was revealed to him by his Creator and which contained things that no other human being could have known. Additionally, the Messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him was the best of humanity in every aspect of his character including his intellectual skills, whom they find written in what they have of the Torah and the Gospel, who enjoins upon them what is right and forbids them what is wrong. 
and makes lawful for them the good things and prohibits for them the evil, and relieves them of their burden and the shackles which were upon them. So they who have believed in him, honored him, supported him and followed the light which was sent down with him. It is those who will be the successful. Quran 7, 157 The translations of the meanings of the Quranic verses in this book have been taken from Sahih International, the Quran, Arabic text with corresponding English meanings. Please note that any quotation in this book from the Quran is the translation that we feel has the closest meaning to its original Arabic. The translation is not the Quran itself. The original Bible given to prophets Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, contained a complete profile and clear prophecies of the coming of Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him. Even in its present forms, the Bible still contains many such prophecies. Quoting Prophet Jesus' blessings and peace be upon him, the Quran has stated. And, mention, when Jesus, the son of Mary, said. O children of Israel, indeed I am the messenger of Allah to you confirming what came before me of the Torah and bringing good tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name is Ahmad. But when he came to them with clear evidences, they said, This is obvious magic. Quran 61, 6. The main attributes of Prophet Muhammad's profile in the Bible. The main elements in Prophet Muhammad's profile, as depicted in the Bible, are the following eight. 1. His name. 2. His characteristics. 3. The location from which he was to emerge. 4. The message to be revealed through him. 5. The fulfillment of prophecies which he foretold. 6. The time when he was to appear. 7. The unique proof. 8. The consistency between Muhammad's and Jesus' teachings. 1. His name. Proof 1, Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is mentioned by name in ten places in the Gospel of Barnabas. Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is mentioned by name in ten places in the Gospel of Barnabas, in chapters 39, 41, 44, 54, 55, 97, 112, 136,165, and 220. The Gospel of Barnabas is not included in either the Protestant or Catholic Bible. Consider the following explicit quote from chapter 165. The disciples answered, O Master, who shall that man be of whom you speak, who shall come into the world? Jesus answered with joy of heart, He is Muhammad, Messenger of God, and when he comes into the world, even as the rain makes the earth to bear fruit when for a long time it has not reigned, even so shall he be occasion of good works among men, through the abundant mercy which he shall bring. For he is a white cloud full of the mercy of God, which mercy God shall sprinkle upon the faithful like rain. It is a fact that the Trinitarian Church has done its utmost to obliterate all existing copies of the Gospel of Barnabas and to either hide it from the masses or to label it a forgery. 2. His Characteristics Moses, peace be upon him, reported that God told him, I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers. When these words were spoken, they were addressed to the Israelites. The most notable brothers of Israelites, Jews, the descendants of Abraham through his second son Isaac, are the Ishmaelites, Arabs, the descendants of Abraham through his first son Ishmael. And I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. Deuteronomy 18 18-19 So the coming prophet will have three characteristics, which are discussed in further detail below. He will be like Moses, peace be upon him. He will descend from the Ishmaelites, the brothers of the Israelites. He will say what God instructs him to say, for God will put words in his mouth. Proof 2, is like Moses, peace be upon him. As explained in a brief illustrated guide to understanding Islam. There were hardly any two prophets who were as similar as prophets Moses and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him. Both were given a comprehensive law and code of life. Both encountered their enemies and were victorious in miraculous ways. Both were accepted as prophets and statesmen. Both migrated following conspiracies to assassinate them. Analogies between Moses and Muhammad overlook not only the above similarities, but other crucial ones as well. These include the natural birth, the family life, and the death of Moses and Muhammad blessings and peace be upon him but not that of Jesus.
Moreover, Jesus was regarded by his followers as the Son of God and not exclusively as a prophet of God, as Moses and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, were and as Muslims believe Jesus was. So, this prophecy refers to Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, and not to Jesus, because Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is more like Moses than Jesus, is. Ibrahim, a brief illustrated guide to understanding Islam, 34. Dot some people believe that this prophecy refers to Prophet Jesus peace be upon him, but this cannot be true. The following eight points of comparison among Prophets Moses, peace be upon him, Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, and Jesus, peace be upon him, demonstrate that Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, does not fit this particular prophecy. This comparison is self-evident, it clarifies the identity of the Prophet who was to come after Moses, peace be upon him. Birth the birth of Jesus, peace be upon him, was miraculous. According to Christian and Muslim beliefs, he was miraculously born of the Virgin Mary. In the Gospel of Matthew 1:18, When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, the carpenter, before they came together she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Luke tells us that when the good news of the birth of a holy son was announced to her, Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Luke 1 34-35 The Noble Quran confirms the miraculous birth of Jesus in noble and sublime terms. See Al-Rasi, 11 Facts About Jesus and His Mother Mary in Islamic Teachings It should be noted that it is not necessary for Allah to plant a seed in any human or animal, He merely wills it, and It comes into being. This is the correct view of the conception and birth of Jesus. However, both Moses, peace be upon him, and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, were born in the usual manner, as a result of the physical association of man and woman. Therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is like Moses. Parents Moses had a father and a mother, and so did Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him. Jesus, however, had only a mother and no human father. Therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is. Marital status. Both Moses, peace be upon him, and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, got married and had children. There is no record of a marriage and offspring in the case of Jesus, peace be upon him. Therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad blessings and peace be upon him, is. Death. Both Moses, peace be upon him, and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, died due to natural causes and were buried. The end of the mission of Jesus, peace be upon him, on earth was unusual. Being raised up to the heavens, according to Islamic belief, and being crucified resurrected, and then raised up, according to Christian belief this subject is discussed in Al-Rasi. Is original sin a fact? According to Christians, Jesus died for the sins of the world, but Moses did not have to die for the sins of the world. He and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, died due to natural causes. Therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is. Prophethood. Jesus was regarded by later Christians as the Son of God and not as a prophet of God, Allah, as Moses and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, were. Therefore, Jesus is not like Moses. But Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is. Acceptance rejection of prophethood Moses and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, initially met with resistance and skepticism, but they both were eventually accepted by their own people. During their lifetimes, as prophets and leaders, this was not the case with Jesus. When Moses learned of a plot to kill him, he left Egypt and went to Madian, where he was welcomed and reassured by Jethro. After returning to Egypt later, Moses led the Jews out of Egypt to escape Pharaoh and his soldiers. There is no doubt that the Jews caused endless trouble for Moses as they wandered in the wilderness. One significant lapse was their worship of the golden calf, but ultimately, the Jews, as a nation, acknowledged Moses as a messenger of Allah who was sent to them. The Arabs made Muhammad's life terribly difficult during the first ten years of his mission, and he suffered very badly at their hands. 
After 13 years of preaching in Makkah, he left his hometown of Makkah upon learning of a plot to kill him. He went to Yathrib, later called Medina, and before his death, the Arab nation in general acknowledged him as a messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him. In contrast, the Christian Gospels clearly confirm that with the exception of a few followers, Jesus, peace be upon him, was rejected by his people the Israelites, throughout his lifetime. According to their Bible, he Jesus, came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. John 1 11, even today, after 2000 years, his own people, the Jews, on the whole still reject him. Thus, from this aspect, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is. Confrontation of the enemy Moses encountered his enemies, the Pharaoh's army, who sought to destroy him and his followers before they could escape to the Red Sea. Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, also encountered his enemies, the pagan Arabs, who sought in several battles to destroy him and his followers. No such encounter was reported in the case of Jesus. On the contrary, Jesus was reported to have commanded his disciple Simon Peter to put his sword back into its sheath when he attempted to defend Jesus at the time of his arrest. From this aspect as well, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is. Moral and military victories. Moses' encounter with his enemies ended with a military and moral victory. His enemies drowned, and Moses and his followers were saved. Muhammad's encounters with his enemies also ended with his. Final military and moral victory over them. He and his followers re entered the city of Makkah, the center of plotting against him. Impressed with his truthfulness and magnanimity, the great majority of his former enemies chose to become Muslims and his ardent supporters. Jesus' victory against his enemies was only a moral victory, which did not involve an immediate military victory over them. Therefore, Jesus is not like Moses, but Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him is. Conclusion. Given these eight points of comparison among Moses, peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him, and Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him. The rational conclusion is that Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is the prophet referred to in Deuteronomy 18:18, like you, Moses. Proof 3, descends from the Ishmaelites, the brothers of the Israelites. The two prophets, Muhammad blessings and peace be upon him, and Moses, peace be upon him, were descended from two brothers, Ishmael and Isaac, respectively. To elaborate, Abraham, peace be upon him, had two wives, Sarah and Hagar. Hagar bore Abraham his first son, Ishmael, peace be upon him, see Genesis 16:15, and then Sarah bore him Isaac, peace be upon him, see Genesis 21 2-3. Ishmael became the grandfather of the Arab nation and Isaac became the grandfather of the Jewish nation. The prophet who was foretold was to come not from the Jews, the Israelites, but from their brethren, the Ishmaelites. Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, is a descendant of Ishmael, hence he is that prophet. Isaiah 42 refers to the servant of God, 42-1, his chosen, 42-1, and his messenger, 42-19. Isaiah 42:11 mentions that the chosen one was from the descendants of Kadar. Who was Kadar? These are the names of the sons of Ishmael, named in the order of their birth: Nevi'ot, the firstborn of Ishmael, and Kadar, Adbiel, Mibsam. Genesis 25:13. So Kadar was the second son of Ishmael, and Islamic teachings tell us that they both were ancestors of Prophet Muhammad. Blessings and peace be upon him. Isaiah 42:1-8 reads: Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights, I have put my spirit upon him, he will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud, or lift up his voice, or make it heard in the street, a bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench, he will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness, I will take you by the hand and keep you. 
I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Isaiah 42 prophesies the chosen. 1. Isaiah 42 1, whose mission of prophethood would be for all the nations. This fits only Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, whose mission was for all nations, unlike the Hebrew prophets, whose missions were limited to Israel. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his law. Isaiah 42 3-4 Let the desert and its cities lift up their voice, the villages that Kadar inhabits. Isaiah 42 11. Proof 4, says what God instructs him to say. Allah, the Almighty, put his words into the mouth of Muhammad blessings and peace be upon him, by sending the angel Gabriel, peace be upon him to convey the exact words he should repeat to the people. The words were not his own, since they did not come from his own thoughts. To clarify, when teaching a language, if the teacher asks a student to read or repeat after him, is he not putting foreign words into the student's mouth? The words of the Noble Quran were revealed in an identical manner. History tells us that Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, was 40 years of age at that time. One night during the month of Ramadan, he was in a cave some three miles north of the city of Makkah. In the cave, the Archangel Gabriel, peace be upon him commanded him in his mother tongue, Ikra which may be translated as, read, proclaim, or recite. Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, was terrified. In his bewilderment, he replied that he was illiterate. The angel commanded him a second time, with the same result. For the third time, the angel uttered the same command. This time, Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, grasped that what was required from him was to repeat and to recite, so he repeated the words as they were put into his mouth. Recite in the name of your Lord who created, created humankind from a clinging substance. Recite, and your Lord is the most generous, who taught by the pen, taught humankind that which it knew not. Quran 96, 1 to 5. As soon as the awe inspiring angel departed, Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, rushed back home, shaking in fear and sweating all over. He asked his beloved wife, Khadija, may Allah be pleased with her, to cover him up. He lay down, and she remained by him, calming him down and comforting him. When he had regained his composure, he described to her what he had seen and heard. She assured him that Allah, the exalted, would not allow anything terrible to happen to him. During the next 23 years of his life, after being given the prophethood, words were put into his mouth in the same way, and he uttered them. These words, verses, made an indelible impression on his heart and mind, and as the volumes of the sacred scripture, the noble Quran, grew, they were recorded on palm leaves, on animal skins, and on the shoulder blades of dead animals, as well as in the heart of his devoted disciples. The words, Revelation, were actually put into his mouth exactly as foretold in the prophecy under discussion, I will put my words in his mouth. Dude. 1818, in a similar quote, Jesus, PBUH, says of the paraclete who will come after him. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak. John 16:13. As a scholar of comparative religions has said, Neither the content of the revelation, nor its form, were of Muhammad's devising. Both were given by the angel, and Muhammad's task was only to repeat what he heard Parinder, World Religions, 472. Proof 5, Unlettered Prophet. Muhammad's experience in the cave of Hira, later known as Jabal and Nur, the Mountain of Light, and his response to that first revelation are the exact fulfillment of another biblical prophecy. In Isaiah 29:12, we read, and when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, Read this, he says, I cannot read. It is a well-known fact that Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, could not read or write. The wisdom behind this has been discussed in an earlier footnote. He was described in the Quran as the unlettered prophet those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written in what they have of the Torah and the Gospel. So believe in Allah and his messenger, the unlettered prophet, who believes in Allah and his words.
and follow him that you may be guided. Quran 7, 157-158. Allah has also said, nor does he speak from his own inclination. It is not but a revelation revealed, taught to him by one intense in strength. Quran 53, 3-5. Proof 6, Stammering Lips. The book of Isaiah explicitly mentions, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Isaiah 28 11, KJV. This verse correctly describes the stammering lips of Prophet. Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, reflecting the state of tension and concentration, as well as of unfamiliarity, that he experienced at the times when he was receiving revelation. Proof 7, Revealed in Sections A related fact is that the Quran was revealed in sections over a span of 23 years. It is interesting to compare this with Isaiah 28, which speaks of the same thing. For it is precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line line upon line, here a little, there a little. Isaiah 28 10. Proof 8, Name of God. Deuteronomy 18 19 reads, And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. This prophecy in Deuteronomy mentions that this prophet will speak the words of God, starting with the name of God. If we look at the Quran, we will find that every chapter except chapter 9 is preceded by, or begins with, the phrase in the name of God, Allah, most gracious, most merciful. The very first passage of the Quran that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him, reads. Recite in the name of your Lord who created. Quran 96, 1. Furthermore, Islam teaches people to start almost every action in their daily lives with the words, in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. And this is in accordance with the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him. As mentioned earlier, the name Allah is how Allah refers to himself in the Quran and how Prophet Muhammad, blessings and peace be upon him always referred to him, to say, in the name of Allah is a far clearer fulfillment of the prophecy he shall speak in my name than are other common expressions such as in the name of God or in the name of the Father. Referring to Allah, God, as the Father is an example of the serious distortions in the Bible. Allah has said about Himself, He neither begets nor is born, nor is there to Him any equivalent. 